Yes, I'm seated in the confession booth and there is a fine gentleman here. He says he wants to share his story and also his confession. And my ears are wide opened. I would just grant him a listening ear. My dear, you're welcome to confessions. Thank you, Miss Nancy. Yes, uh, it's your first time. Yes. It's good to have you relax and share your story, your confessions with us. Once again, thank you, Miss Nancy. And this is my story. So I dated this girl for about four years during my university days. It was a very lovely relationship and it looked at the time as though nothing could separate us. Okay. <sighs> Along the line after university, I had the opportunity to visit the UK for my master's degree, mm. to pursue my master's actually. Okay. And we were sold down after the whole after the news broke out that I was leaving to the to UK. And she had to stay. <sighs> We didn't know what to do, we were so down and sad, and I decided to promise her we were not ready to get married anyway, but I just decided to, you know, give her a promise ring as is ethical of any level-headed boyfriend. Yeah, uh, you were not getting married then, then but no. you intended to marry her in the future. In the future. So you wanted to promise her. Yes, it, awesome. it didn't feel like it was enough, so I had an idea to engage her in a blood covenant because I heard that uh, it's a way to keep her relationship going. So, so after you promised her, you still felt it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. You felt it wouldn't have a weight for you. Yes. So you decided to go into the blood covenant. Yes. The, the, the giving the ring was not, you know, symbolic enough for me. So I had to engage in a blood covenant. I would marry her anyway. So. I decided to engage in the Blood Covenant, which we did. Uh, I cut my thumb, she did too, and we mixed our blood. I mean, like we see in the movies, right? Yes. <laughs> and, well, then, like I said, it was a foolish idea, but the movie seemed to me a real thing that day. Hmm. Uh, we finally did it, and I had to leave. Hmm. When I got to the UK, we kept in touch, and it was so lovey-dovey. We would chat for hours, mm, FaceTime, I and all love that. You, I miss you. I miss your face. I know, Miss Nancy. <laughs> After a year, I met this lady. Mm. She was nice, with a great personality, and you know, she was so supportive of everything I did. Mm. She was my course mate, and mm. she was always there. To be honest, I felt as though she was double of what my girlfriend was. Oh. It's sad to say, but I felt as though she was double of what my girlfriend was. Mm -hmm. And I love her. You do? I do. But that is where the whole issue lies. Mm. Because after the whole thingy promise and all that and I finally met someone who's given me the, all the attention, all the care, all the support. The love you needed at the time. Exactly. I didn't know what to do. So uh, I started showing attitude to the other lady, which is my original girlfriend. promised girlfriend. Yes. Okay. Started giving her attitude and making up flimsy excuses like having extra assignments and that the UK is not an easy place to live and because I had found someone that I have fallen in love with. And so fast forward, um, have you officially broken up with the one you promised? I could, I could sense that she, she's heartbroken by how I seem to be responding to her now. Yeah. But, but you are in a relationship with a new one? I, I, and that's an issue because any time I want to make a move to settle down with this new lady, mm -hmm. the blood covenant comes up mm. and it, it kind of, you know, discomforts me. I'm unable to make a steady move because of the blood covenant. And You're scared that if you break... What exactly did you guys say when you were giving each other your word? I mean, giving each other your blood, literally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had read somewhere that 
the blood ones it mixes, it's forever. So when we engaged in it, these were the words that we recited. Together, forever, nothing can separate us. If we did go our separate ways, may death meet us. Miss Nancy, these were the words we spoke. And I'm not just scared, I am haunted by these words. Because mm. I have met someone else and I really want to make a move. Move on. Yes. And I'm sure she's met other people too within the period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quite a confession, mm -hmm. quite a story. Yes. I'm sure you might have heard or read or saw a story of a sort in a movie or in a book <laughs> but here we are living somebody's reality he says together forever if we part ways may death meet us can you imagine and now he wants to part ways and these words wouldn't get out of his mind out of his imagination and he is scared it is a story let us go to the studio and see if we can help this gentleman or if indeed he's stuck with his own words and his own actions. This is Confessions on TV3. I am Miss Nancy. See you at the studio. Yeah, so that's one love story. Yes. He thought he had met a woman that was the love of his life. And then he met another and realized that this love was deeper than the one I thought. Yet he had given his word, his blood as a promise of sticking with only the first one. Now he is afraid to move on because death might meet him. I love you. Miss Nancy. It's good to have you back. Um, on this particular issue, um, mm -hmm. what I know about covenant is that we have various type of covenants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the gentleman just have um, a relationship covenant. Yeah. We have the one that have with uh, groups, mm -hmm. like courts, yeah. societies, mm -hmm. association. And Even all. when you are working with your own company or you mm -hmm. are working in an institution, mm -hmm. you, you take a vow that mm -hmm. there are certain things you don't say outside. Yeah. There are certain things you don't do. Yeah. They are all covenants. Yeah. But in this particular case, what the gentleman and the lady just did, me, I call it childish. Mm. Because people think when they are in their teens, or they are in their youth, when they meet girls, and they don't tell them things that they want to hear, they don't give them things that they want, they will not believe in whatever they are saying. Yeah. So in this situation, most guys will do anything possible, will say anything convincing to make sure they get you. And that is what the gentleman did. He says that they, he gave her a promise ring and he thought it was not good enough. Yes. Because some ladies are greedy. Hmm. <laughs> some ladies are greedy. <laughs> hmm. You understand? Because see, you are in the uni. What else do you want from the gentleman? The only thing you can afford. Maybe he has kept this susu, uh, getting this money, and then paying for that ring, giving it to you. Now you say you don't want it. And he wants to get you. So what he did was that, okay, I have heard that with covenant, ladies believe in it. Or some ladies believe in it. So let me just go the extra mile and say so things. So he did it. Now he's things. in the UK. Ah, a brochure here. Body fresh. Oh. Hmm. Body tilapia. Ah. Fresh body. Who can when you have your body? So now, he's torn between marrying that lady in the UK or the one in Ghana. What do you tell him? <coughs> I, I know he, he, he cannot do anything. So that do you part. <laughs> eh? Thank you. He cannot do anything. That will definitely be him if he decides to. Esther, you have a question? Yeah, I want to find out if he has officially ended things with the lady in Ghana. Um, does yeah. she feel that the love is no longer there, probably because of proximity. If they have ended a relationship, yes. is it a mutual or mutual understanding? Exactly. Yes. You are still there, are you not? Okay, so we want to know if you had a mutual understanding, if the relationship with the first woman is over, and if you have a mutual understanding. So, 
she felt the energy drain as the relationship died, I should say died of natural causes. And natural death, yeah. Yes, and gave me the go-ahead that she has been to church to break the bond and the covenant. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, it's safe to say that we have officially broken up because she's given me her word that the relationship has come to an end. So I can So go the lady has sought help. She's been to church, she's been prayed for, and all. Oh. Yes. Um, a Esther? follow up from what he just did. Um, so, how long has the breakup been, and has he experienced anything weird after the breakup? Because I feel he, he only said that he's just decided to move on, and any time he makes the effort, his heart skips a beat. The name is Nancy Nancy Harrison. Miss Nancy. So, um, in this case, I think um, both of them have to see a pastor. Okay, mm. then they need to pray to break some stuff. Mm. Because sometimes you go to, you'll be in a situation whereby things, maybe you'll be in abroad, your lady will be in a different place. You guys, mm -hmm. one will be more effective praying and doing this stuff. But yeah. when it's really separate, it doesn't work that way. Whereby if both are together, and they Same break it. And they break it. It works. So there are all manner of suggestions for this young man, and they're asking them to pray together. And I'm asking, do they need to use blood again and say that with this blood, I am undoing my love, or I'm taking back my words, or whatever? Since we're all thinking about it, we would need the counselors right here in the studio. Let me take this break. When we come back, Counselor Ebenezer and Kelly Daniels joins Confessions tonight. <laughs> Uh, Kelly, please. Show them some love, show them some love. Good to see you, sir. So nice people. This is Kelly Daniels and this is Pastor Ebenezer. And it's always a delight to have them with us here in the studio of Confessions. Welcome, gentlemen, to the studios of Pastor Ebenezer and Kelly Daniels. People, let's talk about love. How many times can I fall in love in a lifetime? Should I only think that I met this person and I feel great about the person? I mean, I feel butterflies in my stomach when the person kisses me. I'm numb all over and this is it. Or we should give ourselves opportunities when we fall in love for the first time because it may not be the first and the last time we fall in love. Kelly, how many times have you fallen in love already in this lifetime? <laughs> I, I believe that love um, dwells within us. And so love never stops. It never you, stops. You wouldn't say, oh, I have fallen in love five times in my lifetime or 20 times in my lifetime. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lovable being. And so love dwells in me. I mm. am love, as a matter mm. of fact. I'm supposed to be love personified. And that's the same thing that everyone should have in their minds. Love is who you are. Love is not a, an occasion that happens to you. Yeah, but then, I mean, that kind of love that makes you want to settle with somebody, that makes to, you want to make that person your, your premier human being, how many times? Are we entitled to just one true love or in this life? No, every, everyone is entitled to always want to be with somebody, okay? Mm. Now, and there's no one person for one person, per mm. se. Mm. So um, if a woman loses her husband, mm -hmm. is she supposed to stay a widow for the rest of her life because the one person who God gave her is, is gone, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's false. Mm. It means that she should be open enough to accommodate somebody else who is interested in her and who she's also interested, interested in. in and have a beautiful life. There's no one person So it person means that it's not person. just one time you would ever no, love. No, no, it's impossible to think so. You're currently married, are you not? I'm married. And what how many depends? times were you in love before that and after that? Uh, well, I mean, I'll well, spare you the after that because I know the problem, Beba. <laughs> no, ever problem, <laughs> Nima. You know, the point is this. Um, love is singing the song in somebody's heart. Mm. So anytime you, you, somebody sings the song in your heart, mm. It, it, something happens to you. Mm -hmm. And basically, we can call that love. However, there is something God has given to us yeah. that is self-control, self-discipline. Mm. And that is why you cannot go your way to always want to follow the one who sings the song in your heart. Yeah. 
Uh, we could also say that um, one of the philosophers of old said that love is like a soul dwelling in two individuals. Mm. So anytime that kind of agreement comes between two people, love is about to generate. But like, once, but, but like I said earlier, because of self-control and self-discipline, then you know how to keep that kind of feeling. So like he said, he's right. Normally, normally we want to appear so decent and nice and public. Yeah. So it's difficult for people to talk about some of these things, but yeah. that is the reality. Now, love, again, are words enough? When you are so into somebody, person makes you go crazy. You want to spend the rest of your life with the person. Are words enough? Should words be enough? Because looking at this young man's story, he said, I promised to marry her. I gave her a promise ring. Yet he thought it was not enough, so he had to go on for the blood covenant. Is it a lack of trust or confidence in the partner? Okay, um, let me come from the biblical perspective. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, mm -hmm. the old apostle counseled and said, My little children, do not love in words, but in deed and in truth. So love is an action word. It's an action word. Love is an action word. However, from this month's uh, story, uh, it's quite a complicated one. But let's try to unpack it. I have realized some five key words mm -hmm. in his um, confession. One is word itself. Mm -hmm. Word has authority, it has power, it has a mandate. Mm. And so the Bible says, death, both death and, and life, life lies in the, in the, power, in of the power of the tongue. tongue. And so what we speak forth mm. comes forth. Word is that powerful. So it's not necessarily the blood that they mixed. It's the we, words they said We would come after. to the blood. The blood is the second thing. Mm. Once again, you see, in blood lies life. So, so anytime... Anytime you give blood, you are giving life. Yeah. It is the reason why almost every covenant that is quite permanent mm -hmm. comes with blood. blood. And we should understand that. So that's the third word, actually, covenant. Mm -hmm. Covenant, from where I stand, did not start with man. It started with God. Mm -hmm. I'll give two clear examples. One is Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, mm -hmm. where God gave, if you follow the biblical narrative, God gave Adam and Eve a tunic yeah. of skin. Yeah. How did he get that? An, an animal was killed. Yeah. When he called Abraham and made a covenant with him, according to Genesis 17, 11, Abraham had to be circumcised. Yeah. And that circumcision blood. was blood. Mm -hmm. You know, so blood is key in the whole of this conversation. So not just the words, but the blood, blood. aspect of it. And like I said earlier, what we speak forth comes forth. And so it, it's a, a very difficult situation that we have on our hands as we speak now. He spoke powerful words and he sealed it with the blood. With the blood. Kelly? Um, you see, when you speak, you are giving life or death mm. to the circumstance in context. Mm. Mm. Words are as powerful as creation itself. Mm -hmm. right? It's what you say you, you create the life of. Mm -hmm. And so the situation in which we are, certain words have to be spoken to counter the words that have been pre-spoken. Mm -hmm. Those first words spoken are like an altar built. Mm -hmm. And until other words speak in counteraction to that first word, that mm. altar abides. Oh, yes. That altar solidifies to the point that even God can change it. Mm. I say even God can change it not out of heresy, but the fact that nothing happens on earth without a spiritual intervention through man. Mm -hmm. So it's either a demon is speaking through you or for you, or an angel is. God is always using a human body to act on the earth, and demons are always using a human body to act on earth. Those words were words spoken 
without God's backing, but were as powerful, and it manifested. So now, it takes the power of a greater understanding to break or shatter that altar in speaking words against the word which were spoken before. before. So, if whatever he said, whatever he said, whatever he said, a higher power than he is has to speak against those words, just in case he doesn't want to and pull out of it. Yes. A higher power than him has to speak against those words and then that altar or that bond or that um, um, bondage would be destroyed and everyone would be set free. <laughs> the words we speak and the powers behind it, right. the things we say. Now I try to tell my friends that you should mean the things you say and say the things that, that you, you mean. mean. Of course, we need to speak to the experts. I don't know if in this case, the doctors would, I mean, people that are into hematology, the study of the blood will tell us what happens when two people put their blood together. I mean, medically and uh, spiritually, anybody out there who is a specialist who would give us information about how these things are and how they work. Let's go out there. I will not go for a blood covenant. First of all, we, we all know that formation of life first starts with blood. In this modern age and time where things are, um, diseases are transmitted via blood, why would you even opt for blood covenant? What if in future you don't want to be with this person? What if somebody else comes along? What if this person treats you badly? You're stuck in a relationship you don't want to be in. I've been through real love, so um, and we didn't need a black covenant to do so. The sacrifices were enough. The kind of things my partner and I did for each other didn't require us to go through any blood covenant because um, ours, I would say, always tell people that it was a fairy tale because anytime I tell my story, people think I've picked it from a book and I'm telling it, but it was real love. For me, I wouldn't do a blood covenant with my partner. Why, why should you even opt for blood covenant? What if your relationship turns out to be a toxic one? You know, you don't get to know someone immediately you guys meet. So eventually, if you get into a relationship and then you realize the relationship is toxic, how do you move out? I would do the covenant with my partner. I'll do the covenant with my partner based on some reasons. You see, most people do the covenant forgetting the words or the things they tell each other. So I will do it. But the clauses in the covenant will not go against each other. If I have to say, after dating you for five years, if we can't marry, let the covenant cease. I'll do the black covenant. So it depends on things you put in that works against you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to the studio and my audience. You see how quiet they are? I'm sure every one of them has said something. <laughs> Things that they probably cannot take back. So hey, let me come to the studio. And uh, my lady, she has a contribution or question? It is a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, so according to him, the lady has already gone to a pastor to see a pastor and then broken it. Mm -hmm. I don't think the pastor has broken it because it was between two people. And if you're going to break something, then you need a two people in front of you. They need the presence of the two to unbreak it. Because one person can just go and then say the words and then it so will be So for you, because the gentleman was not there, yeah, but I they said God is omnipresent. Not, not, all, not all the time, Miss Nancy. Um, not, not, not all the time should the two people be involved. Yeah. If I was indoctrinated into a cult, yeah. I don't need the cult's consent to back out if mm -hmm. I realize that I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. That's why I mentioned a higher power. Yeah. A person who's got spiritual hierarchy. Mm -hmm. A person who beats that level at which they were. Yes. A person who has a higher level of understanding mm. than, they, than their level of um, folly. A person who can stand in the court of heaven and say, by who I am in mm. Christ, mm. I stand against this and I say this is hereby null and void. So you so don't always the need. Was no, present, you don't. You don't. You don't need. So once one person says it's it's over, it's over. Kelly, if if the lady has been prayed for, right. she went seeking for help. Yeah. 
Right. She probably has been delivered. Right. How about the gentleman who has not gone for any help? Ah, uh, my man, you are still there, right? Ha have you gone to see any person, a spiritualist, a pastor, a prophet, to give you help? Have you been prayed for concerning this issue? Uh, I have not seen the need for that, so I haven't done that. He hadn't seen the need. Okay, so in this case, he's going to um, have to deal with enduring or enduring the consequence of his decision. So would the same happen with the lady. And let's not see anything wrong with what he's saying. It's his choice. Yeah. Life is about choices and we'll live with them. He's not so, into so pastors, nor prophets, Exactly, nor and he's not people. obligated to. Mm. He stood his ground to initiate it in the first place, to say, this is what I want. That's his belief system, and we wish yeah. him the very best today. Thank you. Right. Thank oh. you. Let's hear okay. before okay. Pastor, you come in. Uh, I believe um, what the gentleman just said with regards to he doesn't see the need for it is, is very dangerous to talk like that. Mm. Because as a matter of fact, as it stands now, he's not going to be the only person who will suffer for his actions. Mm -hmm. The next generation to come after him mm. will also go through the same problem mm. of like the, the, the benefit he got from the words he spoke and the blood exchange he did. Mm. So I believe that he shouldn't say he has not seen the need for it. It's very important he work on that mm. because if the other lady is free, mm -hmm. he also needs to be free. Mm. That's why he's still having those nightmares and seeing things in his dream. Mm. And as a matter of fact, he also disturbed the new lady he's going to get into a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Because he's coming into something she doesn't have an idea about. Wow. But because they agreed together to live together, exchange is being made in the realms of the spirit. Right. So he, she will also get a portion of what he carries. And it will be a dangerous thing for her. Also, uh, in this case, can we say there is a soul tie? Yeah, uh, definitely. Anytime you, you in, the, in the matters of the covenant, mm -hmm. that I would not call it a soul tie. You know, but the point actually is this. Covenants are in two folds. Mm -hmm. You can have what we call a, un a unilateral covenant. Yeah. That is one person by yourself. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. You know, whether you obey or what, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And yet, the other one is bilateral. And that, that is what they have done between mm -hmm. two people. Two people. Between two people. And so, yes, the covenant that they have made could be broken. Mm -hmm. Could be broken. However, if he, he insists, if he insists in keeping to the words they have spoken, it is not gone off him. Mm. But the lady by taking the step and also allowing it to be broken, it's going to fail. Mm -hmm. Let me say this quickly, that love is a covenant mm -hmm. and marriage is a covenant. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, marriage itself is a blood covenant. Mm -hmm. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. When you marry, it is the reason why in the olden days, they emphasized a lot on virginity, mm -hmm. keeping yourself pure. Mm -hmm. Because when you marry, and you consummate the marriage, mm. as soon as the, the woman's blood. hymen breaks, there is a rub of blood. Mm. And there is a covenant in that. Mm. There is covenant. Is that why you, you never are able to forget your first boyfriend? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you see, you see, what they have done is just a rash decision. Yeah. Because loving each other is so great. You know, the Bible says, love is as strong as death. Mm -hmm. And so, loving each other is so great, they could have consummated this when they marry with the still blood covenant. Mm -hmm. So, it's out to all of us listening mm -hmm. that there will not be the need to rush for any blood covenant because yeah. the marriage institution itself is a blood covenant. I imagine your virginity was broken by Kojo. That's one first blood covenant. Mm. Then you go see Akwesi and you say, I love you so much. And then you cut yourself and you mix your blood, another blood covenant. Mm -hmm. And eventually you don't end up with Akwesi and you go marry Kweku. You can imagine. You carry a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. Now, now, 
can, can he just say that I want to bear the consequences of my actions? I want to live with the words. And so let me just marry this woman anyway, even though I don't feel the same way about her. Marrying anyway, Kelly. Well, that's the carelessness of spontaneity hmm. uh, where proper calculation is not taken. Hmm. Biblically, we say you do not build a house before counting the cost. You count hmm. the cost of the house before you build it Don't to see it. if you can hmm. finish it should, should you start it. Uh, this person is a very, very irrational thinker <laughs> who urgently needs help and a cane. And a cane. Uh, yes. <laughs> where help means counseling, where cane means brutal reprimanding. Yeah. Because if he doesn't, if one doesn't work, one must work. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, he will not be alive when his great grandchildren mm. are suffering the consequences of what he's doing now. No. And they would not know what they are carrying mm. on them. And they'll be living, everybody here has to break something on their heads that they didn't know of, <laughs> which was done by some people Buddy. who were directly, the people who are doing us are not people who are far away from us. Mm -hmm. They are in our bloodline. They are. And until the bloodline is flushed off, until we, are, uh, uh, until we get rid of all of those, we are not free from our internal enemies. Mm. We mm. must understand this. It's, we, are, we are our own reason for toxicity in us already, even That's before it. we talk about who is against it's us, us, who has cursed us, who has... It starts from the bloodline. Mm. The blood and words, the most two powerful mm -hmm. tools that can build or destroy us. Now, guys, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Show him some love, I love that. L let us look at you guys. H how many times have you fallen in love already? Oh, I don't think I can count. Imagine if you had said some words. Imagine if you had given your blood. Imagine you've given your body in the whole process. Mm -hmm. How many times are we allowed to fall in love before we finally set a lot of work? Or we should, as, as youth, going through university, tertiary education, into starting your first job, should you give yourself some time to know one or two or three or maximum seven women before you virtually set up? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me let me say this: that uh, there is what we call the principle of first things first. Mm -hmm. Life is well arranged and packed, so that if you jump step one mm -hmm. and you fall into step six, you have to come back. It will mm. bring you back. It will bring you back. Yeah. And, and and basically, it is like mathematics. Mm. Life is like mathematics. You have the question, which is called problem, mm -hmm. and then you have a formula mm -hmm. to work it, to get the solution. Mm. If you jump any step, the solution would definitely be wrong. Yeah. Definitely would be wrong. So we need to take our time. How many and times should I fall in love? Like we said earlier, that you cannot count. Countless. Yeah. However, at any given time, you have to be careful and know what exactly you are going through. Mm. Because there are other things that may look like love. Infatuation, obsession, Lust. all these things no. may yeah. deceive you and think that you are in love, yeah. and, and yet they may not be. So at any given time, you need to take your time. And like what I said earlier, he only rushed to crash, and several people are doing the same thing today. Gentlemen, are you there? Oh, yeah. Have you been helped? I have not seen help yet, and that's why I'm here, because I finally want to settle with her. And I've already promised her that by March, we're going to get married. So, so you, you're going to settle with a new woman? Yes. So you are coming to sort out the old vow and covenant? Exactly. And we are recommending prayers for you. Would you take it? If that helps. If that not? helps, you will. I, need, I oh. need to be broken free, so. Of course. So he has made the decision to move on. And uh, now he says he will take the prayers and see. I'll laugh you out to you before I come back to you, Kelly. Sorry. Yeah, Miss Nancy, um, there's one important thing. I've been listening to men of God speaking, mm -hmm. but I always say this. There are people out there who don't also believe in all this. Mm -hmm. okay. So I want to tell the gentleman, when the man of God tells you, we have broken it, to me, it is not true. So. Because Mr. Kelly keeps saying, some powers that supersede every power. 
in the Bible, we have Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He knew he was going to die for everybody. Mm -hmm. When he was on the cross, he said, Father, why wouldn't you let this cup go over me? And get so many. You understand? Mm -hmm. So at that point, we could have avoided everything and then let everybody be. Mm -hmm. So I would advise the gentleman, if he wants to go back and have, you know, they say you cannot have your cake. Uh, you cannot, you cannot eat, eat your cake and, and have it. And have it. Mm -hmm. So you should go back to the lady. They should cut their hands again. Mm. Put the blood together. And whatever they said on that day, the two of them can't take it back. <laughs> and then from there, we can move on. Then the pastors can come in. Thank you. Alafia is being very practical here. <laughs> he says that the same way in which you created a covenant, go back. And he says after that, let the pastors lay. The Bible says the presbytery lay heads on you. Yes, right. we're wrapping up the show. And uh, well, if, uh, um, yes, Kelly. I'm just asking, what if she's not alive? What do you do? What if someone dies? What do you do? No, mm. no, no, no. I'm just, I'm not saying you it's should It's a rhetorical respond. question. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying we should think about yeah. it. But one very, very, one very key thing I want to mention before we wrap this up is, Besides the blood covenant and the wet covenant during all these things, th there's this crazy thing as a counselor that I experience a lot, I mean, when, when talking to people. And, and this is just an advice to who cares to listen. All the statements you make when you're with someone and making love. Hmm. Oh, you are my this, you are my, you are my that, I you are my this. world, I will, I, will, I will give you every, my life is yours. Those things are key. Spirits are listening. You're the only one I'll ever love. Just because you're about to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Oh, it is a good one. I mean, you are sinning and sinning on top of a sin <laughs> to say that, oh, you are my every, and then when you when you when when, when your when your body is now at ease, mm. do you even remember the things you said? Mm. You, you don't. But things have travelled, mm. and you would reap those things. Let's My be goodness! Careful. I mean, gentlemen, Let's ladies, Pastor Kelly says that at a point when you're getting your big O, and your world is almost on an earthquake, and your whole body is shaking, and you're feeling everything from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Mind the things she you just say. Just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> you have seen it already. Just, Kelly, just, just, sometimes just. it's so good. You yes. can't. Wow. See Nancy. how many times you call on Jesus. Like Jesus. Oh, at Jesus. that point, too, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> some do. Some do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> some do. <laughs> but but, but that, that's serious. That's, that's serious. Okay, so we're wrapping up your last comment so, and I'll come to Pastor Like Elijah. you ask a question, uh, how many times do we need to fall in love? Uh -huh. I want to make a very critical statement. Please do. Love is not a feeling. The feeling. Mm. If we get that understanding, we will come out of this hula balloon. The thing. number of times you should fall so, in love. love is, is love not, is a, not feeling. a feeling, it's a what? It's a decision. Uh, it's when a you're getting married, it's a responsibility. Mm. If I say I love you, it's not a feeling. It's a responsibility. But you have to feel it first before you, see, you act it's on not it. It's not a feeling. When Christ and God said they love us, they mm -hmm. made a sacrifice. So the interest or the, the, the motive behind love is to look for the other person's well-being. Mm -hmm. So if I claim I love you, then I should look forward to how better you become after I have met you. But, but, not but then, when, when you saw me, there was a Joa who was slender and taller. And she probably had no curves. And then you saw me, I was petite, and I had great legs and some curves. And you decided that you would make the decision to care for my well-being. You felt something. Yes. So I always tell people, the first thing that attracts me to you is not what I feel. It's what I saw. Mm -hmm. So what I saw is what attracts me to you. Right here, right here. Ah. So, so after seeing... I now need to sit down, like he said, to calculate whether I have the capacity, the ability mm. to maintain what I've seen and mm. move it to the next, next level. level. If everybody thinks like that, we will not have the situation. Thank we you. Have. Thank you. <laughs> Pastor Beneza, your last words, and we'll be out of here. Yeah, uh, actually, the gentleman should seek the help that has been offered him mm. or go, uh, go for the help that has been offered him so that he can be set free. Freedom. It's a state of mind. Freedom is a state of mind. You see, let me share this example, my last words actually. When the Israelites left Egypt, 
Egypt was in them. Mm. So what, it can be broken, but you have to take it out of you. And that is very, very important. Um, love has led him to take a decision. Mm -hmm. Love must lead him out of that decision mm. to reverse it. And I think both of them will be free and then move on to their lives. As we people, this brings us to the close of another edition of Confessions on TV3. My name is Miss Nancy, and as I'm leaving, I would want to leave you with these words, that if you're loving for the first time, it may not be your last. Be mindful of the things you say, and be mindful of the things you do.